it's Richard Barrett for Guitarist Magazine here and I have the Gibson Les Paul 70s Deluxe to show you. As you can see, it is like most Les Pauls in that we have two volumes, two tones, a three-way selector, key difference being that we have the mini humbucking pickups which fit into the same footprint as a P90. I'll go into lots more technical detail as we go, but first of all, shall we have a listen to the sounds? I'll start with the, the bridge pickup. <laughs> There's a thickness to it that you would expect from this kind of body construction, but this kind of pickup adds a bit more detail. And in the way that a Telecaster has a fat twang, so does this. And that alternative voicing carries over to the middle selection as well. There's a depth there. I'm not saying it sounds like a Telecaster, but if you can imagine that feeling of a big body giving you some resonance, but lots of detail on the top, then that's what this gives you. And I guess that's why it was so popular with Pete Townsend and Scott Gorham from Thin Lizzy. Let's have a listen to the neck. To get a bit deeper into this, what we have here is in essence a Les Paul Deluxe style guitar because we have these mini humbuckers, but Gibson haven't got bogged down with a slavish copy of the 70s construction features. We have a one piece mahogany neck and that has the modern headstock angle of 17 degrees, whereas many of the 70s guitars were 14 degrees. The headstock itself is slightly smaller than you would expect on a deluxe from the mid 70s. Uh, the heel of the neck has a slightly rounder feel, whereas the 70s deluxe would probably be a little bit more straight into the body. This is one piece neck and a one piece body. So th th this is not um, in any way something that's been skimped on. It's just that Gibson have chosen not to go down the slavish reproduction route. Think of this as a Les Paul that captures the spirit of the 70s originals, but without some of the less popular features like the pancake bodies um, and the three-piece maple necks that many say departed in a very significant way from what a Les Paul should actually be. Um, talking about the electronics for a moment, very traditional Gibson Les Paul, they're CTS, high quality pots, 500K, a shade under, I think, um, and if you check out the detailed review in Guitarist 476, you'll be able to see some of the, the detailed spec there. But we have um, modern wiring, which is very different from the often spoken about 50s wiring, in that you do lose a smidgen of top end as you come down, which may even be an advantage when you're looking at the bright mini humbuckers. Shall we have a listen to that? So if you're really digging in like that with it on maximum and I bring it back to about seven or eight. You can hear that it's just become a little bit more warm and rounded and that carries through to the neck pickup as well. If you want 50s wiring, it takes about 10 minutes to do, but this is, I think, a really nice choice for this guitar. Now, these mini humbuckers themselves, they're like the originals, not super high output. They're an Alnico 2 magnet, and it's blade magnet under this cover. The bridge pickup, about 6.3K, neck pickup slightly less at 6.1, which is nice because, as you know, you need a bit more power in the bridge. Standard three-way selector. Um, locking Nashville type bridge, usual Gibson radius, nice dark rosewood board and beautifully fretted. 
So I don't think there's anything to complain about if you want a high quality Les Paul that will give you those kind of classic tones. So in summary, really lovely guitar, some great tones, not all the vintage 70s appointments, but as I've already said, not everybody wants those. One thing that it does have is that it is a non-weight relieved body. It's heftier than some you'll pick up, but it's nowhere near as heavy as uh, some of the originals. It's about 9.7, it's under 10 pounds. And it's retailing at about 2,100, so it's in the reach of a lot of players.